different ways to run a Unify controller. Uh, here I list uh, several ways I tried. Uh, first, of course, you can install on your own PC and then or on your own uh, virtual machine uh, or you can host it on a Docker. And the last one is the one I'm using. I'm using a Unify device. Uh, in my case, it's a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. Uh, I will show the different ways and I will explain uh, the different pain points. Uh, one common way to run Unify controller is to install the controller on your own hardware. So uh, I haven't tried uh, Windows installation, but I uh, in the past I ran it on different uh, Linux platform. Uh, for example, on the screen you can see uh, the Arch Linux, uh, how to uh, uh, install the controller, and uh, on the right side, which is for Debian or Ubuntu, how you can run it. So the left side is from the Arch Linux community, and the right side is officially from Ubiquiti. Here I will uh, show you shortly how to uh, install the controller on Arch Linux. So I run the yay command and you install Unify. And just by the way, yay is a convenient way to install the software on AUR. So I will uh, fast forward and let you see the final results. Okay, after three minutes, it's installed and no issues. Now let's enable the Unify service. Uh, run the system control command and enable Unify. Okay, enable. Now let me uh, start the Unify service. Okay, start it. Let me uh, double check whether it's really running. Okay, active, running. Everything looks good. Let me Connect to the just installed Unify service and launch a browser window. Type in the HTTPS localhost. The port number is 8443. Okay, so everything is running and I can connect it and I can start uh, create a user if I want. It seems the whole installation process is very smooth, but you are not uh, always so lucky. So sometimes you will see, for example, a MongoDB installation error, uh, compat compatibility issue, right? So even if uh, you are lucky, you install it correctly, you run it for a while, and then when the new version of Unified Controller comes out, when you want to upgrade, you will go through all the hassles again. And that's the part I hate very much because one of the reasons I chose Ubiquiti Unify platform is because of the user-friendly part. So I don't want to uh, spend a lot of my time just to maintain a environment to manage my network. Another reason I don't like this way is I need my unified controller to run 24 by 7 so that it can collect all the network statistics without any interruption, which means I have to keep the uh, computer running all the time. Yes, if you have 
already have a standalone server, and uh, anyway, you are going to keep it power on, no problem. But if you only uh, install a controller on a computer, and then just for the unified controller, you have to keep your computer on, and then maybe you want to calculate your electricity bill every year. Now I'm in my server room. Uh, sorry about all the background noises. That's my rack mount server. Uh, here I want to show you the, uh, the, the way I run my virtual machine. So many people use virtual machine to run their unified controller. That's a very popular approach. I once used that for a long time, but in the end I had to stop it. Uh, it's just it's my problem, uh, my own issue, because uh, the main reason I use virtual machine is to try something new and play around and uh, not for production usage at all. So many times I have to uh, turn on and off the server and I have to uh, change the underlying storage, uh, change the memory, and all of this will impact the virtual machine. And many times I had to start from scratch, right? So it's not very stabilized environment to, to run the unified controller. Uh, when you run the unified controller on a virtual machine, it's almost the same as uh, if you install them on a physical server, right? I don't want to waste your time here, but I just want to mention the additional problem if you write on a virtual machine, uh, which is uh, the environment is not very uh, stable, especially uh, for you guys if you uh, use your virtual machine in your home lab environment. Another popular way to run Unify controller is through a Docker. So here I'm using the Synology NAS and it has the uh, built-in Docker functionality. So I'm running it now. Uh, first, uh, you want to download the uh, image. You search it from the registry. Uh, let me search Unify. Okay, so this one is the most uh, popular one. And if you, uh, you can double click to download it and then you can easily set it up. And, but I won't uh, demo you that part. Uh, you can try it by yourself, but let me show you the link. It will lead us to the uh, repository. And I, as you can see, this is the version 6.1 as of this date. Uh, you may know currently the most recent version for Unified Controller is 6.2 something, which means this Docker version is already behind. That's the problem. That's the reason why I don't like the Docker approach because you are at the mercy of the creator of, of this image. So if they don't update their image, you have to stick to the old version of Unified Controller. So yes, to write uh, on Docker, it's convenient, it's easier, it uh, uh, needs very least setup, but the upgrade is a problem. This is the logon page for the Unify Cloud Key Controller Gen 2 Plus. And as you can see, it has, it can control two different things. Uh, the Unify Controller to control network and the Unify Protect. Let me click Network. Then this is your familiar Unify Controller UI. And if I click the devices, yeah, I can see all the devices in my network.
This is my Ubiquiti Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. I use it to host my Unify controller. In fact, it has another major functionality, which is for Unify Protect. But I use my NAS for my surveillance cameras. So I only use this cloud key to run Unify controller. So far, I'm very happy with the result. But the only thing I have concern is about its super hot temperature. In fact, this cloud key is the hottest devices uh, in my uh, uh, service rack. So today, let me switch the power supply from its built-in PoE Ethernet cable to a quick charger. Let me see whether it can improve the temperature condition. The blue Ethernet cable in the upper right of the video is the current PoE cable. Uh, I use to power the cloud key. So it's plugged in my uh, PoE switch. I'm going to use the Milwaukee thermal gun to measure the temperature. Now on the screen, you can see the current temperature around the cloud key is about 85 Fahrenheit. And the red dot is the laser, and wherever it points to, it will measure the temperature there. It's uh, pretty accurate. And let me move the red dot around the body of the cloud key and to get the highest temperature there. Okay, as you can see, as you can see, the highest temperature is 109 Fahrenheit. It's pretty hot. This is the uh, Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus uh, web page. Uh, I want to show you how you can change the uh, power supply. So as you can see in the back, uh, there are two USB-C part. This was just for output. And it is not for uh, PSU. Uh, this one, uh, you can provide a QC 2.0 USB-C uh, cable to provide the power. The regular iPhone or iPad uh, plug uh, won't work because the voltage and the amp are not uh, high enough. So this is a, I believe it's 12 or $13 uh, charger I bought from Amazon. Uh, it supports the so-called uh, quick charge 3.0. Uh, Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus requires a quick charge 2 compliant charger. So this one is uh, compatible. And uh, now let me uh, try to use it to power on my cloud, cloud key. I have uh, reconnected the ethernet cable. As you can see the blue one now is connecting to a non PoE part of a unified switch. Now let me remeasure the temperature. Uh, let me use the thermal gun to scan it. You can see the red dot. Okay. Okay, this is the temperature. It's 107. So it's a little bit lower than previously two or three degrees, not too much. So yeah, I will use this way for a while and at least it's a little bit uh, lower.